Hello, my name is Hans George Campbell. Welcome to part three of my Amiga 1000 repair and refurbishment series of videos. Okay, um, whenever you work on an Amiga 1000 motherboard, make sure that you first um, remove the bottom shield and these pieces here. You want to have the motherboard sitting directly on top of your tabletop preferably with an anti-sag mat on the table. Never work on the Amiga 1000 motherboard while it's in the case. Never do that. Even if you have to just reseat the chips or pull the processor out to plug in like a, a different type of board or something, or you have to remove these and plug in like a kickstart ROM switcher or whatever, Always remove the Amiga 1000 motherboard from the case first. Remove the bottom shielding and remove these so that you can rest, you, you can sit the Amiga 1000 motherboard directly on top of the table or your anti static mat. Okay? That's the proper way of working on an Amiga 1000 motherboard. I see so many of you working on your Amiga 1000 motherboard while it's still on the computer. Don't do that. Don't do it. You risk the chance of stressing the board too much to where you'll actually damage these little small traces that are throughout the board. And this is a multi-layer board. This is not a two-layer board like top and bottom. There are at least one or two layers in between. In fact, I think this is a three-layer board. There is a layer in between the top and the bottom layer. That's where your micro traces are, a lot of your micro traces. And if you flex the board too much, okay, you can actually break those micro traces. They can be broken. That's a very uh, difficult um, problem to diagnose. So whenever you have to work on your Amiga 1000 motherboard, Take it, remove it from the computer, remove the lower shield, the bottom shield, and remove these pieces here. Don't be lazy. Don't be stupid. All right. The tools that you're going to need to remove these here plus you got to remove these in order to clean the card edge connectors here you, these have to be removed first okay and the tools that you're going to need you're going to need a low torque um, number two Phillips screwdriver like this one okay you're going to need that and you're going to need a nut driver like this. I think that's a 732nd inch nut driver. That's what you're going to need. Okay? So, I'm going to turn this around like this because I'm right handed. Uh, make sure that you can see what I'm doing. Put the nut driver on there, right? And, okay, if they're really tight like that, you might need a full side number two. You might need a full side number two. In fact, yeah, just use a full side number two on this. 
Okay, and that should do it. Pull that out like that. There's the nut. Okay. Now, this one, it has the, the grounding thing right here. That's where the grounding uh, strap from the disc drive plugs into. Okay. And then there's the 732nds inch uh, nut right there that goes on the other side of the bolt. Okay. Do the same thing for the other um, the other side. Okay. Do not use like needle nose pliers or anything like that. Use the proper tool which in this case is a 7 seconds inch nut driver, okay, and a full-side number two Phillips, okay? Don't be lazy, don't be stupid. If you don't have the proper tool, stop what you're doing. Go out and buy the proper tool, okay? If you don't have the proper hardware, stop what you're doing. Go out and buy the proper hardware. Okay? Don't be lazy. Don't be stupid. Okay, so that's been removed. So now I can more readily clean that card edge connector, and I'll show you how I do that. Now I gotta remove this one too. Anyway, these, if they're bent up, this is a good time to, you know, put these back in shape the way they go. That one's slightly bent up, right? And these here will usually be bent out of shape too. And the best tool for that, remember, use the proper tools, is a flat nose plier or duck bill pliers like these. If you don't have these pliers, Stop what you're doing. Go out and buy these five. Now, I got this set of pliers at my local Ace Hardware. But they sell these at any place that sells tools. You can get flat nose pliers like this. You can even get them online like eBay or Amazon or whatever. Okay. So, what we want to do now is we want to make sure that these are bent straight. Just press like that and it'll bend them straight. Just go like that and press, squeeze. See how that one's deformed? See how that's deformed? You don't want them deformed like that. So, see? Put it in there like that and squeeze. And now it's no longer deformed. And so when you get ready to screw something in there, it will now go in there with no problem. Okay, see, there you go. Now that is no longer deformed. It needs to be brought in a little bit, just a little bit, just bend it like that a little bit. It should be at the same level. See now, those have been uh, repaired. See, and now that whole piece right there is nice and straight. You know, these pieces are straight. So this, this screw, it's usually a sheet metal type screw, a self-tap screw will go in there with no problem. All right. And the same thing with this piece here. See how this piece is, is slightly above the rest of them? They need to be in line. So, you know, twist that back down where it's in line with the other ones. Okay, so it maintains the same amount of pressure as the other ones, right? And then this needs to be at a 45 degree um, angle. So bend it back towards at the proper angle, 45 degree angle. Okay, see how crooked that is? It's supposed to be straight. So put your duckbill pliers in there and squeeze straighten that out now it's more straight that's the way it should be straight like that same thing with this other one on this side should be straight okay 
just like that. There you go. Now it's straight. A lot straighter than what it was. Okay. So that's been cleaned up. That'll work nicely. All right. And the way I clean up these, I usually have my alcohol bottle like this. I showed you this in the last video, part two. And I use a a cotton makeup pad, okay? When you want to clean large surface areas, don't use cotton swabs. It just takes too long. And I see so many of you doing that. I laugh at your dumb asses when I see you do that. That is so damn stupid. No, you use cotton makeup pads for large areas. Oh my God, people. Use your brain for something besides a hat rack. You know? Use your brain. There you go. That looks a lot better. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. I want to make sure you can see what I'm doing here. Okay. Now after you finish wiping this, do not touch it with your fingers. There you go. Should be nice and shiny and clean. That's the way you do it, boys and ghouls. Okay, like I said, don't touch it with your fingers after you finish cleaning it. And see that side is now nice and clean. So now I can put that, the middle part back on there. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do, uh, let me close up my alcohol bottle. Um, we need to get this other this other shield off of here. Okay. Oh, come on, get on there. All right. There you go. I usually try to keep these separate. that one and uh, sometimes I don't want to come out of there <laughs> come on drop that screw I know for sure anyway and of course those those metal parts that came off here they can be wiped down with WD-40 um, I'll be back because I gotta look for that screw so I will be back shortly alright I managed to find that damn screw that fell Okay, so let's clean that with a cotton makeup pad. See, cotton makeup pad. Um, I usually get these in packages of like, they used to sell them in packages of 100. Now the packages are in packages of 80. is done. Let's go ahead and do this. Look how dirty that got. 
So yeah, these definitely needed to be cleaned. These card edge connectors definitely needed to be cleaned. Yeah, they get dirty and and that could cause problems with connection of your like this one is for your memory expansion. So you definitely want to make sure that's kept clean, right? And then the other one, the side one there, that's your side expansion. That's for plugging in everything else, your side expansion there. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and put these pieces back on. I'll do that off camera. And then I'll continue uh, assembling this Amiga 1000 computer. So I'll, I'll, I will be right back shortly. All right, I managed to get these pieces back on, bolted back on, after cleaning, first cleaning those card edge connectors. I did that off camera because they are a pain in the butt to put back on. Okay, so the next thing we need to do, we got to put the bottom shield on. Now what I did was I took this this Mylar P, this semi-clear plastic pieces in here that comes out and I took it inside the house and wiped down both sides with uh, a clean damp sponge and I put it back in here and then I wiped down this other side here with a rag sprayed with WD-40 and then I, you know, just to condition the metal keep it from oxidizing or rusting and I took a clean rag and wiped it down again just to get, you know, I don't want, I don't want like a, a greasy WD-40 film left on here. Just, you know, it's okay for a real light film. That's fine. Like just what's on there now, that's fine. But, you know, you want to wipe it down with a clean rag. Okay. So, what we need to do now is we need to put the bottom shield... Um, back onto the motherboard. So let's go ahead and, and do that. Yeah, it goes on like that. Okay. And even this piece went on. So that's good. So now we want to take flat nose pliers or duckbill pliers like this. And you want about an eighth of an inch between the end of the pliers and the top of the, the board. You don't want to have these flush onto the board. And you don't have to go crazy when twisting these tabs. Just twist it enough to keep the board from, I mean, the, the shield from coming off. That's all you need to do. It's a real light twisting, nothing crazy. Okay? Just like that. That's fine. Twist it down here. Like that. That's fine. That's fine. Nothing crazy. Just like that. That's fine. Uh, I believe we have one more tab there. And I'll show you how I do it. So that you can see. I have about the eighth of an inch between the end of those pliers and the top of the board. About that much. And then twist like that. Nothing crazy. Just a little bit of twist, just to keep the bottom part, the bottom part of the shield, the bottom shield from coming off. That's all you need to do, and that bottom shield is reattached. And it's been cleaned, you know, it's been conditioned with WD-40 to keep it from rusting or oxidizing. Okay. So, yeah, that is ready to go back into the, back into the case, which we're going to do right now. All right. 
here's the case. I did manage to... Okay, let me zoom out a little bit. Um, that's fine like that. I did manage to find one of these covers, but this one's a little yellowed, but it's okay. As long as it, you know, covers this, I'm happy with that. At least until I can find one that's not uh, yellowed, you know. That right there is fine. Until I can find a, one that's not yellowed. All right. So now, make sure this puppy is in there like that. Okay. Make sure this is underneath the camera. You can see what I'm doing. All right. Okay. All right. So, we got to put the motherboard. Um back in here. Now, hmm. Okay. I'll be right back. I need to get the, the back piece because that has to go in there before you put this board in. In fact, let me see something about this board. Because it appears that It looked like the RGB port was bent. This part right here was bent, you know, but I think it's okay. It'll be fine. Anyway, I'll be right back. I need to get the back piece. All right, I got the back piece. And as you can see, it's now nice and clean. If you remember from part one of this video series, how dirty this was. Um, and this was, I think, discolored back here. But now it's, it's very clean. I'm very happy with the way that turned out. You have to be very careful with these back pieces uh, on this vintage plastic because these break real easy, especially this area right here. Breaks real easy. So you got to be careful. Okay. They slide in like, like this. It, uh, it slides in like that. Okay? And you want to make sure this is in while you're putting in your motherboard. Okay? So now what we got to do, this is not easy. I hate doing this part. In fact, what we might gonna have to do probably. Yeah, this is like a damn Rubik's cube, man. It's like a freaking Rubik's cube, man. Man, look at this. It's got. It's got to go in there. Yeah, it's got to go in there without breaking that that plastic piece. Okay, we don't want it breaking that plastic piece. These have to be spread out so that it goes in. Um, that has to go in like that. And then those go in like that. Okay, yeah, that worked out really good. Make sure the power supply is in there like that. Make sure the back piece is in there really good. It's not broken, not binding or cracking. So, that actually turned out pretty good. Okay, yeah, that, that turned out really good. Make sure this is not broken or fucked up. It looks good. I don't see anything wrong with that. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. This here is all fine. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and plug this back in. Um, yeah, power supply back in. So the power is plugged back in. 
Okay. The first screws I usually put in are these screws here. And these are screws, for some reason, on this Amiga 1000, Commodore did not put the screws in here. And they should have, because that holds the power supply firmly in place, because you're putting in a lot of pressure when you're trying to plug in that AC cord. You're putting a lot of pressure right there. So they really should have put the screws in here, and that's what I'm going to do. I already pre-tapped that plastic. So I'll go ahead and put that in. Okay, something for some reason not. Okay, it should go right in, no problem. Because I already pre-tapped that, so. Yeah, it should go right in, no problem, just like that. Do not tighten that until you get the other one in. It has to go in too, so goes in right there. Yeah, why didn't Commodore put these in, you know? Okay, don't tighten it yet. Make sure all these other ones they got to go in too. I'm trying to think where the screws were. I'm pretty sure one was there. I know that there's a screw there and there. I think that's it. As far as the screws that you know mount the motherboard to the bottom half of the case, I think that's it, if I remember correctly. Um, hmm. I'm trying to think if there was one there. Let me see. There is a standoff there, and there's a standoff here. So. Hmm. These go on the back. That goes to the daughter board. So it's got to be these right here. Yeah. That'd be that. I mean, those. I don't know. Pretty sure it's these. Pretty sure it's these boys and girls. Pretty sure on that. Okay. All right. Go ahead and tighten this baby down. Yeah, I don't know why Commodore didn't put these screws in there, because they should have. They should have put those screws um, in there. Now, before I go any further, I want to double check and make sure that the power supply is clipped, is slid in right here, where it's supposed to be. It slips in right there, and it is. So, you got to do that before you go any further. And you got to make sure that that rear part right there is slid in where it's supposed to go. It's not broken or cracked or, you know, but that slid in um, where it needs to go. So, yeah, that looks good so far. Looks pretty good. Um, 
I borrowed screw. Okay, I have a second. I, I got a, a second Amiga 1000 in this lot, this Amiga Megalode. Um, and I, said, I decided to use that second Amiga 1000 computer as a parts computer because the case was in really bad shape. The motherboard is in really nice shape. I'll keep it as a spare Amiga 1000 motherboard, including the daughter board. It was, it was okay. I'll keep that as a spare. Power supply is okay. I'll keep it as a spare power supply. But the case, well, the front piece is really nice. I'll keep that spare, you know, that front piece as a spare. But the bottom part of the case is broken. The back part of the case is broken. And the top part of the case is broken, too. So I'll just throw those in the garbage or throw those in a recycle bin, you know. Uh, I'll keep as much of it as I can because parts for the Amiga 1000 are getting very hard to find. But I did manage to get screws from the other one so I can fully screw this one together, which is really nice. Okay, so I think one screw goes here. Okay, let me see some. I think it's going to be small ones like this. Let me see. You know, this might not have been screwed in either. You know? Okay, I need to get this one. I'm probably tapping this because it wasn't screwed in either, and it should have been because you put a lot of pressure plugging in your joystick and your mouse, especially your joystick. So that should have been, this should have had screws in it too. I don't think this was ever. Screw it in. I don't see any um, threads in there. Yeah, this definitely has to be screwed in. Yeah, there's no threads in there. Wow, no threads. So I'm basically tapping that. Alrighty, that's fine. I'll have screws in here now. I don't know why Commodore didn't put these screws in from the factory. Okay, that's it. Don't over tighten. Because that's going in the plastic. So, yeah. Now, these, these should now be firmly held in place. Yeah. Put no screws in there. And then... We got the screws there holding the motherboard in place. We got the screws here. Okay, so the motherboard is now held in place. It's secure to the bottom part of the case. <clears throat> All right. Let's uh, install the disk drive, shall we? First thing you want to do is you want to plug in um, plug in the grounding strap. It's, you know, that's in there, that's in there, and then, okay, those, okay, yeah, this part slides down over here, okay, I'm going to go ahead and plug in the, um, the power to the disk drive and plug in the 
drive cable. Okay. All right. Okay, so that's in there. Okay. And now, okay, we have these kind of screws. There's four of those screws that go onto these standoffs that mount the drive on those standoffs. And you need to use a low torque Phillips screwdriver like this one. Don't tighten until you get all four of them in. Just snug it, do not over tighten. Just snug. Okay. Okay, just snug it in. All right. So now we have to screw in four of these brass parts. They get screwed on um, right here. That's what holds down the mouse port and the joystick port. And I'll be using a standard screwdriver like this one. You just want to snug it. Do not over tighten.
All right. So the drive is now installed. All right. The next thing that needs to be done, this is a part that I think most of you probably do not like to do, but we have to um, plug in the daughter board. That has to be plugged in. So, yeah. And you have to line up all the pins. So, if I remember correctly... Okay, I'm going to go ahead and brush it off real quick with a makeup brush. There's some dust on top of the board. So, while I got this out, might as well dust it off. Doesn't take long. And then... Alright, I want to make sure that this all lines up properly. Okay, before pressing, and make sure that the capacitors that uh, actually, you know what, I don't know why that one's aimed down like that. Um, because when you plug it in, okay, pull this back up. Because this capacitor here, for some reason, it's supposed to be straight, like that one. It's supposed to be straight. And it's not. So I'll do it like that. That's fine, like that. Yeah. It's supposed to be like that. All right, that should be fine now. Yeah, it should be, should be fine now. Yep, I'm just making sure all the pins are lined up before I press this down. And I think it might be better. Okay, let me grab something that I need. Uh, let's see. Where's that? I need my leather finger guard. Where is that? I need my leather finger guard. Well, it's okay. It's okay. It should be on there. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now we need the three screws that screw that in place. And they look like that. Use a low torque screwdriver when putting these on. Okay.
Okay, so the daughter boards put in. Alrighty. I'm just making sure the pins are in there. That's in there. Yeah, it looks good to me. I don't see any don't see any problems uh, with that. Yeah, I don't see any problems. It looks good to me. Okay, make sure the power cords and then yeah, that's all in. So that's in there, that's in there. The next thing to put in there or to put on um, is the top shield. All right, now to put the top shield on. I wiped it down with WD-40 and I cleaned it with a clean rag so um, it goes on like okay how's it going? It should go on just like this Oh, are you kidding me? Alright. Alrighty. See you that way. Apparently, these do not get um, bent because the shield apparently goes on there. That's fine. I haven't disassembled or reassembled that Amiga 1000 computer in it's been quite a while since I've done it. Now it should it should go on there. It's not going on it should go on it should should be going on now unless oh I see what's going on <laughs> I see what's going on silly me these screws here go on over the shield I didn't know. All right. Okay. Now the shield should it should go back on there. Um should go on there now. Uh Yeah, that goes on. Um that should go on now. That should go on. Uh, yeah. That should go on. Let me double check. Make sure he's my spudgy. Yeah. Um, that's over that. That's fine. Okay, so I'm gonna have to use have to use my tweezers to get those screws in. Okay, yeah, that, uh, yeah. Do not use a full side number two screwdriver on those. You want to use a low torque um, screwdriver. Yeah, 
slow torque screwdriver. Okay. All right. That's in there. I think I'm going to go ahead and put all these in. Good. Put that in. Put that one in. Put that one in. And we'll go ahead. Now we want to put these in. And just double checking, make sure they're snug, not overly tight, just snug. This is a low torque screwdriver anyway. But you have metal screws going into plastic. So, especially on those screws there, do not use a full size number two screwdriver like this. All right, because I had my put my fingers all over that, I'm gonna go ahead and wipe this down again. Yeah, wipe this down again. I don't want this top shield rusting. 
so yeah. Double check, make sure the back piece is still on the way it's supposed to be. And looks like it is, so that's good. Well, that's it for part three of my Amiga 1000 repair and refurbishment uh, series of videos. This, that's it for part three. Um, stay tuned for part four where I finish putting the computer together and I actually set it up out here in my shop and we turn it on and I'm going to show you some programs. So part four will be coming up within the next three or four days. Anyway, that's it. My name is Hans George Campbell and until next time.